Welcome to Film Snobbery Live. I am your host, Nick Baisley, and I have a fantastic show for you guys this week. Normally, I'm just fucking with you, and the show is absolutely god-awful. But this week, this week, let me tell you what we got going on. Okay, we have actress, writer, director, Bria Grant. Who would not want to have this lady on your show? Well, guess what? We do. It's awesome. So uh, if you don't know Bria, she's, uh, she's an actress. She's been in uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween movies. She's been in... Um, She's been in, uh, uh, oh, jeez, Heroes. Come on now, Heroes. Uh, she's got a movie that just uh, premiered at Slam Dance called Best Friends Forever. Uh, that is a fantastic show. And she's also a comic book writer. She's got, uh, she writes for uh, books like Suicide Girls. She writes for Let's Play God and, and many others. It's uh, really talented. I'm really looking forward to picking her brain on some stuff. And also sharing your questions here uh, from Twitter and over in the chat room. So if you're in the chat room or if you're watching this right now, make sure you're at filmsnobberylive.com and you're interacting with us because that's what this is all about. I don't do this for me, I do it for you. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to show you the trailer for the awesome slam dance uh, movie Best Friends Forever directed by Bria Grant written as well by Bria Grant and uh, <laughs> and we're going to talk to the young lady in a moment and uh, we'll be right back Five, six, seven, eight. You're exactly where you're supposed to be Oh my god, don't make fun of me This is your first road trip I planned a very special scenic route Only you would start a road trip on the first day of the apocalypse This is a time for reckoning. Hey, what's wrong? Do not attempt to leave your homes. The governor has declared Stay martial in. law. The dregs, the dregs, the Why did I do that? Why? It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Harriet! There's no water left. Everyone's gone crazy. Don't you know it's dangerous to be outside right now? <laughs> You're sorry. What is wrong with you? Are you looking for something? I know that it can feel dark sometimes. But I'm your best friend. We're back with Bree Grant. Hi. Hi, how are you? It's fantastic to have you here. Hey, thanks for having me. How have you been? I've been pretty good. You've yeah. got you you were just at your so you're in Park City. I was. Now, let me ask. So Park City, all filmmakers want to go there. Whether you're at Sundance, whether you're at Slam Dance, you were at Slam Dance with Best Friends Forever. I was. And it's awesome, great experience. And do people know what Slam Dance is? Let's tell them what Slam Dance is. Let's tell them. Let's inform everyone. Okay. Um, go ahead. I <laughs> Slam Dance is really fascinating and I only heard about it a couple years ago, but it's um it's sort of like uh, an indie filmmaker response to Sundance, and the idea is that you know, Sundance came out of this like in independent film world, and now they have like a lot of big stars, and it's really hard to get in. And um, Slam Dance really focused on independent films under a certain budget. Um, their and their uh, competition category, you actually have to be a first-time filmmaker, yep. and you have to be under a certain budget. So it's super cool and and awesome for us because I was a first-time director and. And so you know, you're competing against a bunch, bunch of other indie filmmakers who've never made movies before, which now, is cool. Did just just a curiosity? Did you actually submit Best Friends Forever to Sundance as well, like we every filmmaker we does? We did, and we did not get in. You did not get in. Just so you know, so everybody doesn't feel bad about themselves. It's really hard to get into Sundance. Sons of bitches. <laughs> um, yeah, well, S Slam Dance is great. I mean, I, I've had an opportunity. I was there not this past year, but the year before, and we actually just did an interview with Peter Baxter about mm -hmm. their Slam Dance on the Road oh. uh, that they're doing. So. Let's talk about your experience at Slam Dance, though. You had a good screening. It was fantastic. I mean, so the people at Slam Dance are super nice, and um, all of their movies are chosen by past winners or, or past maybe just past competitors. Alumni. Not really. exactly. Alumni. That's the that's the best way to go. And um, so they're super nice, right. and all the people who are picking the movies are super nice. But then also um, just the people running the fest are amazing, and it was super great. I did get the flu. Yeah, um, that happened, huh? Yeah. Where, do, where do you think you got it? Were you doing all the, the oh, no, buses? No, no. Was it the buses? Oh, no. I got it from my boyfriend. I know exactly where it came from. He went to Vegas and partied the week before. And then... <laughs> oh, so you didn't get, like, the Sundance flu. No, you got I got some sort of really... I actually went home early because I was so sick. Oh, wow. Um, and we were just... I mean, he got there and was kind of sick and went to um, our screening and then... The first... Our premiere screening. And then I started feeling sick, and I made it to our second screening, and then after that I was in bed for the next few days, which sucked because I, I needed to go to meetings and do all these things, and I was like, no way. 
I was going to say, how do you, you know, what do you do to take advantage of the fact that, I mean, you are at Slam Dance, but, you know, you have that Sundance kind of press and all that kind of stuff that's there, and not for nothing, you've got some cachet. Right. You know Thank what you. I mean? You, got, you have juice. <laughs> You're Bria fucking great, you know? Come on now. So, you know, it's, it's just be like, I'm Bria, bitch, you know? Um, you know, so do you, do you, what do you do to kind of try to take advantage of your time at places, you know, that, that have that kind of visibility? Um, you know, I mean, well, we, we hired a publicist, which I think is, is absolutely necessary and unfortunate in that, like, I mean, when anybody's planning out their, um, their budgets for their films, that, mm -hmm. that should absolutely be included in your budget. Just plan to spend five to seven thousand dollars. I know it's a lot of money, but no one told us. We didn't know this was going to be coming up our way, that we needed it. But um, I knew it as an actress. A lot of times, you know, I hired publicists as an actress, but as a filmmaker, it was, it was a totally new adventure. But that was really super helpful. But then also, for me, I just I know a lot of people, so it was very it was great because we got invited to parties and got to go do other things because of of just like some of our connections that way. Well, that's so, cool. You yeah. got a couple of parties, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think anybody's been to Comic Con. I kept comparing um, like the Park City to Comic Con because it's like full of people and everybody's kind of sick and everybody's like trying to like promote their thing and like we're literally like putting up posters every like we would just go down the streets and put them on top of other people's posters and then it would be covered up in like three minutes. And it, yeah, and it's still fanboyish, but just it with it's, it's movie fanboy, it's not movie. not comics or whatever. Exactly. But you, do you go to Comic Con? I do. I yeah, do. because yeah. you're you're a, writer, a comics writer. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's you, why. Yeah, and and just also, I mean, it's Comic Con's fun. I've you never know? been. I've been, I've been to... I've, I thought you have to go. I want to, but... It's, you have to go. I will make it an effort to. I, I, I've been to Kamikaze. I've been oh, yeah. to a couple of the Wizard Worlds. I've been to Chicago and Philly. And, but I have yet to go to San Diego. Like, the mother, the mothership. Right. You and know? I mean, to be honest, San Diego is a little bit stressful. And it's like, it's not just... Like, it's just like... It's so full of people. And there's so much to do. And there's so many people who are like... You're just getting like a hundred texts an hour where everybody's like, let's meet up. And I'm like, I live in the same city as you. Why am I trying to meet you up, meet up with you here? And it's just, it's a little stressful, but it's, it, but it is super fun. And there's a lot of stuff you, you would never see except there. But I like the smaller cons better a lot of times. Like I love Emerald City and I love like those kind of places because it's more comic centric. So yeah. if you go for that reason and not to like party and hang out, then that, those are the better ones to go to. Do you ever, does it ever occur to you, you know, obviously a lot of the people that know you probably know you from the more mainstream, either like the Halloween movies or Heroes. Right. Does it ever, do you ever get the feeling where you're just like, but no, I've done so much more since then. Um, you know? I know, right? Like, really, like <laughs> have you swear, seen this? I swear, I'm like, I'm really doing stuff, guys. I'm not just sitting around. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, the funny thing is, I mean, because of social media, yeah. I, I feel like, and I got on Twitter um, when I got on Heroes, it was around the same time, and people followed me from one thing to the next, and I feel like a lot of people who started with me there have, like, continued on. That's awesome. And that's been really cool. And, like, they're just, like, the most supportive, nice people in the world, and, you know, even when I do kind of bullshit dumb things, they're pretty supportive and nice about it. <laughs> Somet you know, sometimes, you know, it's, especially if you're having a bad day, maybe you didn't get the audition or, you know, nail something, or, you know, you go to the just like, all right, you know, this is, this is everything. No, I refuse to believe that. <laughs> but you know what? Speaking of, of some of the people that you know, have been following you, let's go, let, as I say, go to the videotape, as it were, or in this case, let's go to the, uh, the Twitter. So we have a few uh, tweets here that we're going to put up on the screen uh, that I'm going to read. Oh. Uh, and I say that more as a cue to the guy yeah. over there uh, from last week. Uh, no, no, he, he's, he's, uh, Bill's great. So here we go. So Jazz Moore. At Jazz oh, Moore. Yeah, asked, which I know Jazz. You know Jazz? Yeah, yeah. All right, this ought to be good then. Because <laughs> she, she actually says the follow-up tweet is, ha ha, great, she'll laugh when, uh, when you ask, I bet. Because okay. I said, I'll definitely ask. So ask Bria, what was it like working with such an amazing animal actor like Cheeseburger the Tortoise for BFF? Um, that's, so Jazz was, um, she came and worked on Best Friends Forever on the reshoots here in L.A. We shot most of the movie in Texas, but then we did our reshoots here in L.A. Mm -hmm. And she, there was one day she brought um, her tortoise, which we, she talked about bringing her tortoise a lot. And then one day I was like, okay, bring the tortoise. And we shot the tortoise. And the tortoise actually makes an appearance in the movie. The tortoise, made, what, is the, what does the tortoise do? It walks. It walks. the sand. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. I I'm excited. You know what? People actually, several people have been like, I love that tortoise shot. And I'm like, <laughs> that was really random that people, but yeah, it was great. She did it. Right. Oh. She's a great worker. Great. Very fantastic. <laughs> One of the other things too, uh, you got a, a little tweet from uh, from the Orlando Film Festival as well. Uh, I saw that this morning earlier that. today. Did I tell um, you? Great festival. 
Is it? It is. Real nice, good party well, festival. Very good, nice. If they're deal watching, they should just they should send a they should let us you know um, yeah let yeah, us come. Hello. Give, give us an invite. Get when on, is the festival? Do you know? Get in on that. I, it's normally in October, November. October, November. Yeah, somewhere we around may there. We be out by then uh -oh. on BMD, but um, we have not announced and we don't know. But if not, I I um, shot a movie in Orlando, and so I love Orlando. It's a it's a lovely place. Lovely place. Are right, we have another question as well? All right, this one I believe I have the right one. It's from. Robert Coupe and uh, at Film Snobbery, as per at Bria Grant's uh, list of acceptable topics, which you had listed before. Oh, I did list uh, let's see, topics. send them your questions. Better stick to these categories. You said donuts, filmmaking, acting, and dogs. Yeah, yeah. So he said, uh, what, <laughs> what is the best type of donut to eat whilst making a film? Oh, you know, I don't, I, you, you know what happens? Here's what happened to me when I made a film. I um, quit eating, and um, not like on purpose or not like. It was just like things started. One, I started choosing sleep over food. Like I just like mm. at night when it was like I could go to bed because I'm done with my work, or I could have dinner. I would go to bed, and that was sort of like, yay, I got my like five hours of sleep instead <laughs> of like four and a half or whatever. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't eat any, any donuts. It was I don't know. I put that thing about donuts because people on my Twitter feed love to talk about um, food. Well, Hi. They love pie and cake, and anytime I talk about pie, it's like I get more responses when I'm like, I ate a pie. They're like, what kind of pie was it? Oh my god! Well, I, I think that that is like the age-old question. It's 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 uh, ninjas versus samurai, or or ninjas versus pirates. That's great. Okay. okay. Or or it's cake versus pie. So which side okay. which side of the line do you fall on? Um, ninjas versus pirates. I, you know, I don't know if I have a strong opinion about that. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go ninjas. You gonna go ninja? Probably ninjas are kind Better of weapons. cooler. Yeah, I would say, and pirates are a little. Um, I think they're a little overplayed right now. They were for a while. Maybe they can come back. Maybe they can come back. We need a, like a good badass pirate, like yeah. movie, TV show, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you I should. Can see that. You should write that. I'm gonna write You're that. Gonna, yeah, make that happen. Yeah, I've, I've writers over here that are just you like far wanna, more qualified. Anybody want to take am. that one? Yeah, hello. On you. It's on That's you. on you. You can have that. So, one. Yours. <laughs> That's a free freebie. <laughs> Um, so, all right, and uh, let's see, did we have another question? Uh, no, those are those three questions for now, but we do have more questions. So, um, Jason Warner Smith also asks, um, he actually has a couple of questions for you. Oh. He asks, first, let's go, what's next for BFF? Mm. Best Friends Forever, in case you guys are wondering what the hell we're referring to. We're actually showing, um, we have a spree screening in Austin this weekend. Um, during, there's a festival doing a similar thing that, that Slam Death is doing. They're showing all of their movies for free. The same time as South By, I'm guessing. Same right? time as South By, but the movies are all free, and I think the booze is free. I'm, I may be crazy about that, but I think the booze is free. It's, um, it's downtown. It's on. You can find it on Best Friends Forever Film. Dot com because I couldn't tell you the address off the top of my head, but I'm going to that um, and I'm gonna host it or I say for talk free about booze, it. pack me in your luggage. Go, let's go. Come, come. And yeah. it's Austin, Texas, which is awesome. So we're showing there and we're showing at a bunch of other film festivals. We basically what we decided was we're gonna we'll, we'll be on VOD very soon mm -hmm. and because um, we 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 sold it and we're we're kind of waiting on trying to figure out when that date's gonna happen. And until then, I mean, the reason we made it is we wanted people to see the movie. Right. So I, I was like, whatever film festival wants us, like they can have the movie. Like they should just take it. No, like no, they're not big enough or no, they don't have enough name. Like we just want to show the movie. So if you want to show the movie at your film festival, write us an email, bestfriendsforeverfilm at gmail dot com. You can totally show the movie, and I would I would love it. It would be fucking fantastic. They will totes show the movie. You, yeah, it's yeah. You should. You should. Yeah. I mean, because I, they, they, you know, we just want to see it. We want, we want people to see it. We want word of mouth to get out there. Oh, totally, absolutely. Yeah. And, and Jason has a, a follow up one. Great. Now the funny thing on this is. Um, it, it, there's a bit of a violation of of the Q and A protocol, in my opinion. I don't know what that means. The, I see. You know, it's like when you're, I'm sure you do Q and A's whenever you do screenings and stuff like that, right? Sure. Oh, he wants okay. to know the budget. He wants to. Yeah. yeah. So well, actually, kind of. He said, "What? Yeah." He said, oh, "Come on, go back." All right. So he said, "What did BFF cost, and where did you get the dough, and will your investors get their money back for or profit? <laughs> How does that work?" Oh, geez. Oh my God, that's such a complicated. I could talk about that for really a really long time. I actually was at a screening where someone stood up and said, "What was the budget for the movie?" It wasn't my movie. And the guy hosting it goes, fuck you, next question. <laughs> and like moved on. <laughs> and it was so mean. And I was like, I understand that. I mean, we don't talk about the budget. That's yeah. something you don't talk about. Um, because, just because, and let me tell you why, because maybe you don't understand this. It, maybe people might not There's understand There's politics this. in this. There's politics in this because it means like if, for example, someone offers you amount of money that you say, oh, well, we made this movie for like 
let's give a small number, like $100,000, then someone can say, like, well, we'll offer them 150 and of course they'll take it, right? Or right. we can offer them 90000 and they'll almost make their money it just, back. It just kills your negotiating position. Exactly. So, but if we, yep. they were like, oh, we made it for 500000 they're going to offer, you know what I mean? Like, it, it fucks around with the... Or negotiation. if you're raising your budget, the other thing, too, is, like, there are some producers or investors who won't play under a certain level. Right. So if you, you know, are pitching something that's like, okay, this is going to be a $500,000 project, but they're not going to talk to you for anything under a million, well, you just shot yourself in the foot. Right. So... Yeah. Exactly. And so that's, I mean, it, it does it does fuck you a little bit if you talk about your budget. I mean, it, it wasn't very much. I like to tell people that we shot for very, very little, and it's very possible we shot on film for very little, which is super hard to do, and I, I think we pulled it off, which was Absolutely. really, really awesome. And um, I do want to say that um, we went through private investors, and there we had several um, investors come in. We had some fantastic EPs that, that um, did another movie I did called Homecoming, and they were amazing. And, Homecoming, um, fantastic flick. Okay. Sean Hackett directed. Yeah, friend of, friend of the show. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Has he been on? He, uh, he's, we've had him on when we were back in Massachusetts. We haven't oh, had him fantastic. in live in studio. We finally okay. met we met in person, though. Um, he lives right over the hill from me. Oh, that's great. We were actually texting back and forth last night. Like, we really should go get a beer. Yeah, you should. You should. He's yeah. fantastic. And, um, but we raised a lot of our money um, via Kickstarter, which I... You know, I like to say because that was um, we didn't go through a traditional way of raising a lot of our post money. How was that experience for you raising money through Kickstarter? Because it's a lot of work. I mean, the great po you already have a bit of a an advantage over some people because you have a following. Yeah. You know, so did you find that that really helped? Or? No, it was, it, doing Kickstarter was fucking horrible. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I would never do it again. Not in a million trillion years. Um, I'd say that, and like tomorrow I'll have like a Kickstarter page up. Yeah, um, totally right. But um, I it was. It was so for my new movie, hard. not in a million years. Right, not in a million um. years. <laughs> it was, it was really, um, it was almost as hard as shooting the movie. I know that sounds crazy, but we had three people. It was me, um, my producer Stacy Story, and Vera, Vera. Meow, who co-wrote and co-starred and produced the film as well. And we best worked, last name ever, by the way. Right, isn't that yeah, great? Yeah. Um, and we did that. We worked on it. I mean, 24 hours a day. Like, each of us would take a shift. I was editing the movie at the time, so I would come home at night and write emails, and they would do stuff. We made, like, 40-something videos to promote it. We raised our money, but it was, like, the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever done, and I hated it. They were, like, it kept me up at night. I didn't sleep. We would call each other. We'd be crying. Like, wow. it, was, it was really intense, and I feel for people running Kickstarter campaigns now. And also, like, yeah, I, I, it just makes me so, yeah, it was, it was stressful. I can imagine. It is. We well, were trying we, to raise we, a lot of money, though. Yeah. We, we try, we, our goal is 75000 and we raised about eighty two or something like That's that. That's fantastic, though. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we raised $5,000 to bring Film Snobbery to L.A. Oh, cool. And so I, I completely understand, but I couldn't imagine having to raise, like, $75,000, $80,000 yeah. for something, it you know? It was really hard. I mean, you get to that $20,000 mark, and you're like, oh, my God, we're not even halfway there. And yeah. It was just like, that was super stressful. And luckily, at the end, a couple of people came in and, like, really were really nice and fantastic. So we have some more questions from people in the oh. chat room, too. Oh, let's Let's do it. Let's do the yeah, chat room. So, chat room. Um, if you even know the answer to this question, I don't know who it's by, but if, you know, we we will acknowledge you if we can find out who you are. Um, how much did Halloween two shift from script to filming? Oh, a lot. Uh a lot, actually, yeah? tons. Yeah. So Halloween two, which is directed by Rob Zombie. Heck yeah. Rob Zombie is. Um, I, I think of him as much more, he's a very much an artist, like mm -hmm. in every way. And so he, a lot of times we would, I would show up to set and be like 6 a.m. or whatever time you get to set, you know, and he shows up and he's like, here, I wrote new pages. And he's <laughs> like, like, he just like spent the whole night like writing new stuff, which was super cool. But also you're like, you know, as an actress who had just come off a TV show, which that, you know, was, that was super stressful for me. But he was really open to letting us improv and like do all sorts of stuff and he was super awesome. So it changed a whole, it changed a lot. They reshot the ending on the movie, so that changed. And um, a couple scenes I did got I did and a lot of stuff got cut, not just my stuff. <laughs> they just cut all my stuff. They cut um, all, all Bria. But it changed it changed quite a bit. But I think that that's Rob, and I think you can really see Rob in the movie his influence in, as a director, not just as a writer, which is kind of cool. That's cool. I, I you know I, people ask me all the time like oh you know because yeah, I'm always asked what's your favorite movie. I'm always asked you know oh you know favorite horror stuff like that. And people. Well, I'll occasionally get in, in uh, discussions with people about the Halloween movies. And here's the thing, my take on the Halloween movies. If I forget their Halloween movies, I love them. I <laughs> sure. love them. I can see that. Not, not, and that's no offense to Rob Zombie. I mean, that's... I mean, they're Rob Zombie movies. They're Rob Zombie movies. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I love The Devil's Rejects. I think that's a great I movie. Um, 
It's funny though, but it's, I think it's because the the canon of of Halloween, Michael Myers, that whole story is so ingrained in me from the John uh, the Carpenter. Right. You know that as soon as I try to shift my you know from from that story. Even if there's a, sh a, sh a shift in oh, the right. story, it kills me. Also, it's a totally different kind of filmmaking you're talking about. It really like. is. Rob Zombie versus, I mean, like, the original Halloween is so paced, it's so deliberate, the music is a very specific way, like, mm -hmm. everything is so John Carpenter in that, whereas the new ones are so Rob Zombie, like, they're shot on 16, they're shot in that, like, very, like, handheld, like, you know, sort of crazy sort of way, mm -hmm. and they have, like, that grittiness that he brings to filmmaking. Absolutely. Uh, but that said, still really enjoy them, just... I have to forget that I'm watching a Halloween movie. <laughs> right, I can see that. Yeah, that no, makes totally. Sense. That um, makes sense. <laughs> uh, we have another one. Uh, so uh, Deanna Ricks asks, uh, it's at Deanna Ricks, so maybe it's from Twitter as well. Um, wasn't this your first time directing? And tell us about your experience. What was the best thing? Hashtag best friends forever. So yes, I'm oh. guessing it was Twitter. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it was my first time directing. Mm -hmm. I was trying to think of what the best thing was. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. It was. It was really intense. Best thing um, was and cut. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was. It was really intense. I I liked directing. It was. Um, it will be a little bit before I do it again. It was like. As an actress, which is what my background is in, um, I show up to set, I say my lines, and I go home. And then I like maybe I go like do like a workout class or have a nice dinner, and I go home or something <laughs> like that, right? And that, but w as a director, you don't ever leave it. And so right. I've been with this project now for two years, and up until we went to Slam Dance, there was not a day I didn't work on it. You know, there was not a day that didn't go by where I wasn't like. In pre-production, you know, working on or in post, working on sound, figuring color, you know, whatever. There was always, there was never a day that I wasn't doing something, and I'm still doing something with it every day. It's just like not a full day, you know. Now right. it's just like emails and bullshit like that. So um, I don't. I mean, I liked it. The best part was. <laughs> I had no idea. Um, I'm gonna have to get back to you because I think the best part is in like finishing it has been really nice and like feeling that sense of accomplishment is mm -hmm. really great. And I was, I can't remember who said it, but I was listening to an interview with somebody and they were like, he was a director and he was like, I, every time I'm in the middle of directing, I always think I will never direct again. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm done, I just want to do it again. And I think that's sort of, hopefully, where I'll get to because definitely in the middle, I was like, I'll never fucking do this again. It was I always, so fucking hard. <laughs> I always hear that it's a lot like what I've, I've heard from women, uh, pregnant women. Mm. Where they're just like, oh my God, I will never have another child after that. That's and then there's just like, yeah. Yeah. And like they just forget about how, painful and miserable that situation was. Yeah, yeah. You know? And we had fun. I mean, we shot in West Texas in Marfa, like a really tiny town, and then we went to Austin. And, and that was super fun. It was, like, really great, like, being out there. It's like, kind of going back home for you, too, right? Yeah, and yeah. I'm from Texas. So we're out there with, like, our cast and crew, and, like, it was just, like, it was, you know, it was a very, like, tight-knit situation, and that that was super fun. And it was it was fun being out there in the middle of nowhere and kind of, like, planning all of that and getting it done. How did you hook up with Vera to work on the flick? Acting class, actually. Yeah. Randomly, um, actually quite a few people in the movie are from acting class. So if you're an actor in L.A. and you're looking for work, go to acting class. Because uh -huh. <laughs> we all met um, in Leslie Kahn, which I guess I should plug. Um, Leslie Kahn Studios, which is a fantastic acting studio here in L.A. And um, we, we, Vera and I met and we hit it off. We had a lot of similar interests and then we ended up writing a movie together, which is totally random. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we have, well, the questions are coming in. Oh my goodness. Like, awesome. Should it's great. Should we just do, a, like, a speed round or something? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, all right, so speed round. Actually, this one will be uh, good. All right, so ask Bria. Um, <laughs> we already, we already kind of got this one. All right, so uh, sh from Shut Up Dugan, ask Bria, Hi, what, Bria, what are the best donuts and why? Oh, well, and what are some of the ones that I would say homemade because I've been making them. And have you been making them? Yeah, that's why I said that people could ask questions about donuts because if they follow my Twitter feed, you're, you're like, you're like bootleg and Krispy Kreme over here. I'm not bootleg, no, 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 because I, <laughs> I bake them and they're like, you know, they're like more like, what do you call those? Like, they're cake donuts. Oh, okay. Of like donut, like not deep fried ones. Yeah, so you're, you're like the, pr you know, the, they say bake not fried, you're like the Pringles of donuts. <laughs> So, yeah, exactly. And they're vegan because I've been using this vegan cookbook. Oh, to make cool. Them. Yeah, so, um, but the the best kind are, I'm going to say baked donuts. I haven't really experimented with kinds yet. I, 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 kinda, I don't know why I told people to ask. I feel them. like I kind of want to try a vegan donut. I should have brought some. I didn't make any today. I haven't made any in a little while. I've kind of, I've kind of tried because I've made too many for a minute. I made like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no donut yeah, for little, the big guy. Little, no, um, no, I should have brought some. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry uh, John Hoff 3 asks, what was it like working with Sean Hackett? Oh, awesome. Does he know Sean Hackett? Oh, we all know um, Sean Hackett. Oh, I mean, that man is a celebrity oh, in himself. Oh, he is. He is. Um, he, it, was, it was great. It was fun. It was, a, um, it was like, it was, 
one of the first like indie movies I had, it was the first indie movie I did after I had done Heroes and done a bunch of TV shows. So it was fun, kind of, because I did a few before. Obviously, everyone, a lot of actors go and do indie movies and then end up in television. So that, it was super great. It was a really fun experience, and um, like I think the movie turned out fantastic. I think the movie turned out. I wish fantastic. people could see it. It's not out anywhere yet. It's it's not. Is it? And I don't know. It's not. It's not out. I'm sorry. I, I think it's going to be. I think it'll be out on VOD. It's, it's out on my in my good, heart. Good. Right, right there. No, I I I've, I've seen it. I enjoyed it. Good. Hackett and I have discussed it. So all right. So uh, let's go another one here. Um, sorry. Ricardo Films asked questions for Bria. Was the hardest part of being a director? Do you plan on directing a movie again? Which I guess uh, kind of segues back into what we were saying. Yeah, and I think the hardest part of being. I mean, I think. Uh, I don't know. Being Is a director, the hardest. It was hard for me to decide like who to hire, I know that sounds really crazy, but like making those decisions because I'm on the other end of it so often as far as like being an actress and being, trying to get a job, it was... But now you have the power. I know, but I hated that. Did you? I did because, you know, you don't want to, because even like, you know, when I was hiring DPs and I was hiring like all sorts of people and that, that was always really hard for me, which makes me sound like I can't make a decision. So there was that, and then also just not sleeping yeah. was really hard. <laughs> that, that was really Your terrible. Your brain going all the time? Your brain going all the time. And then yeah. and the editing process is like almost impossible. It's fucking impossible, because there's so many choices. Like, how do you know which one's the right one? There's no right answer as a director, and I did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's another friend of the show, Alexia Anastasia, asks, uh, do you have any daily rituals to help you to help your positive mindset on set or when you're directing oh. or acting? Or? I like that, is it she? I like that she, she thinks that I'm really positive. That's great. Um, <laughs> no, I am positive. You missed it Jamie? off camera. She was just tearing I down. came in here and I just started throwing water bottles everywhere. And, um, um, no, I don't have any daily rituals. I don't have anything. No? How about, I mean, how about something like yoga? Or, uh, I know because that's a big thing out here. I don't know. I, do, I don't do it. Well, but. I do work out quite a bit, and it helps me get out a lot of my tension and anxiety. You know, I do, and I have a dog, and I walk my dog a lot of days, and most days I don't bring my phone What's with me. What's the dog's name? Her name's Hattie. Hattie. And she's um, she's a big old fluff ball. Like, she's a big, she's a child retriever mix, so she's uh. a big-ass dog. Um, and she, uh, I try not to bring my phone with me, so that's really nice, like, to kind of, like, go and, like, clear my head, like have my thoughts, or like if my boyfriend's with me, we can talk or whatever. That's a nice like sort of like end of day ritual, which helps quite a bit. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, first Glance Film asks, really, Bill? Hey, Not gonna hey, yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> ask Bria about her cupcake. I was actually going to worry. I was going to ask this, so glad you brought it up. Your cupcake quarterly spread just oh, yeah. came out. It did. It, it did. did. It was yeah, a, yeah. The, the big geek. Uh, you know, we have friends, mutual friends that are in that. Oh, do you? Yeah. Fantastic. You know, I haven't seen it, and they and they sent me like a, a zip file of it, and it like, didn't work on my computer. No offense to them. I just like haven't seen it yet, and I only have seen my photos. Um, we have one yeah. photo from it up that we actually threw on the, the oh, screen earlier, so cool. maybe we'll, we'll throw it on again later or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. Yeah, it was a pinup girl magazine, and they did a geek edition, so they had like um, all these cool like geek girls who do a lot of social media stuff, and um, and mine was all comics themed, so I'm like holding a comic book and. <laughs> I don't know. Look at that, look at, look at 1950s. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it was fun. It was super fun. You're reading like Seduction of the Innocent and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> feeling bad about yourself that you're reading horror comics or something. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know. It was it was super fun though. It was like a really fun shoot to get to do to get to go and like wear like pinup girl. I had my hair done all like pinup girl style and stuff. You like that? Super fun. Oh my god, I love yeah. it. Well, I'm a very girly girl, so like anytime anybody's like, we're gonna put red lipstick stick on you and like pin curl your hair, I'm like done and want to do it. Like whatever. You want to do. Yeah. Um, here's an All right, so Jake M. Larson asks, how about one thing that Kevin does that annoys her? Oh ha -ha. my goodness. Kevin is my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how he's watching As soon as we were talking about someone, as soon as someone said, like, what does he do? You know, I'm like, I've been in this position. This is a boyfriend question. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin doesn't do anything that annoys me. He does, you know what? He, Kevin likes to, um, he likes to, he live uh, tweets or live streams. Life. Himself like drumming and stuff, and then the other day he came in and like put his sweaty clothes on me afterwards, and then <laughs> and then and showed it to the internet. <laughs> I didn't like that at all, but I I'm liked it in a like a that was funny kind of way. I got you. He likes to fuck with me. Today, um, this is I don't know if you have time for me to tell a dumb story, but, but today I all the time. was trying to get into the garage, his garage, and I was like I went and got the clicker and I was like clicking and it like wasn't working. I was like weird, and I started walking out off and it kind of went up a little bit. And I was like. Oh, and then I went back and like started doing it again, you know, and then it like went down like lit. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? And I sat there for so long, and finally I walk into the house, and he's like in there dying laughing because I had the wrong clicker, but he had it, and he was like <laughs> fucking with me.
Uh, he, so he likes to, he likes to fuck with me a lot. That's pretty much like his like his joy in life. That's fantastic. <laughs> and I'm really gullible, so that is so like I'm the perfect person to like to fuck with. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Note to self. Yeah. Um, if I ever if I ever get another girlfriend, that's <laughs> that's a joke that's happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Give her the wrong clicker. The wrong clicker. In the garage. <laughs> so. Uh, how did you fall into from the whole acting thing into comic book writing? Um, you know, I because you work on a lot of cool stuff. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, I was on Heroes and um, I had a lot of downtime because, like, you know, Heroes was an ensemble show. So even though we would shoot like ten day shoot days, I would only work like four or five of them. Mm -hmm. So that means like I have four days I can't literally do anything. Um, so my brother and I were like trying to write screenplays and that wasn't working, and then. We um, both read comic books, and we were like, let's write comic books. And I met Ben Temple Smith at a, uh, he's a great comic book um, artist and, and writer as well. Um, but he, I met him at like a comic convention and told him I wanted to write stuff. And he, he was like, let me introduce you to IDW. And then it kind of went from there. And so our, our last. Our comic books have all been with IDW, and they've been pretty amazing. Yeah, you have, uh, Let's Play God, there's mm -hmm. the Suicide Girls stuff. Uh-huh, and our first one was called We Will Bury You. We Will Bury You. Yeah, yeah it's a 1920s zombie story. Nice. Zombie fan? Um, I am. You know, we wrote it a while ago, and like now it's like a little like played. The zombie thing got played a little bit. Do I get tired of certain villains, like pirates, and pirates. zombies, all of them. I get, I get a little, I get a little tired in, in vampires. How, how do you prefer your zombies? Like Romero style or? No, I mean, I wish I could say I liked them Romero style, but I kind of, I kind, I, I kind of prefer the fast zombies. And fast zombies. Movies. Yeah, we wrote slow zombies, and we wrote them like. Yeah, like slow, like old school zombies, but but I I kind of and for my movies I want them fast. I could see that how the slow zombie would work better in like in a comic book though because <laughs> you can it's build still image. yeah it's a still <laughs> image and you could build tension a little bit better that way. Yeah you know? yeah yeah and we figured it was like 1920s like everything was like a little behind I don't know <laughs> it worked. That's cool. So what are some of the uh, the you know you're you're kind of you're you're geek. You know, like the rest of us. Sure. One of us, as they say. <laughs> um, and what are some of the things that you watch either on TV or you're looking forward to in the movies? You know, I mean, I, were you a Batman fan when you know Nolan was doing Batman, or oh, yeah. you know, were you a fan of you know? I mean, obviously, you're on a, a kind of a cult geek show. I mean, Heroes. It you was, were on, it was. You know? It was. And then I did Dexter after Dexter, that, so yep. that ended up being Friday Night Batman. Lights, even too, to a degree. Yeah, you know what? That has like the most amazing like like geek following. Yeah. That, um, you know, it was a football show, and it seems like it shouldn't have, but I think that for some reason it really like got that culture which is amazing. Oh the whole geek thing is like it's what you're passionate about. Yeah I think so too. Yeah. I think it's people yeah people who are passionate about things and don't necessarily aren't necessarily just passionate about the thing that's popular at the moment. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I'm watching right now you know I watch a lot of like really dorky comedies like I love I I, every, I don't know if I should admit all the shows that I watch on television. <laughs> like I watch Girls and I watch The Mindy Show and I watch, um, <laughs> watch New Girl. New Girl. My big jam is I watch Scandal, which is like a show that I shouldn't, that is like should not appeal to me as like a person who loves horror movies and like I'm not watching any of the horror shows right now, which is crazy. I was talking to someone about, about this the other day. I need to start watch the watching the following or something. But um, yeah, so I haven't. I haven't been watching a lot of stuff, and I've been so... The problem is when you make a movie, you start to go like this, and, mm -hmm. like, I haven't been reading comic books, I haven't been doing hardly anything lately, except, like, working on my movie and doing stuff for my movie, so I've been very, like, out of the loop. Does it feel that that kind of kills you creatively at all? Um, well, no, because you have to be. You don't have yeah. a choice. You're just <laughs> creative. It does kill, um, like, new ideas, for sure. Like, I definitely... Like, it's, like, all... Like, I'm not coming up with a lot of new... Things and it's like just now I'm having like new film ideas and stuff like that and that's been uh, that's been exciting to have like new ideas that that I'm writing or working on now. That's awesome. And so all right, so best friends forever. It, it was at Slam Dance. It's going to be playing. It's playing some festival dates right yeah, now. Yeah, and they, everybody can find it on on the website or they can follow at BFF Film on Twitter and we're keeping that up and we're on Facebook too. Mm -hmm. If you search Best Friends Forever Movie, I think then it comes up. And we can definitely find you over at BriaGrant.com. Yeah, yeah, or at Bria Grant, my Twitter. I at keep Bria. it pretty pretty fucking updated. Pretty. It, it, you. You were. I, I will say. I've had a lot of guests on this show for over the years. You're one of the best retweeters we've ever had. Oh, hey. Tweeters that's and retweeters. That's great. That's fantastic. And yeah. actually, I'll say it must be a heroes thing because the top three, and they were all heroes. I would say it's you, Greg Grunberg. Oh, Greg, of course. And David Lawrence. Oh yeah, David. Well, those are two big other social media people. Which yeah. I introduced Greg to Twitter. I, I'm going to take you? that. Did you? You're going to take that one? Yeah, because we were going to London to do promotion together, and I was like, "There's this new thing called Twitter," and I was showing him, and he was like, "Cool," and like he signed up for it, 
and we went to London, and then he opens up his phone when we get to London. I don't know why he opens up his phone like this, but it, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a, some sort of crazy flip phone. But I don't know, and um, he didn't turn off the thing that says, you have a new follower. Oh. And so he just started getting email after email after email after email, and he was like, oh my God, I'm getting like international rates for this, and he was like, he had to turn it off really fast, we had to go find a computer. But um, yeah, they're both super great social media people. Um, what did you have David on for? We, it was for, for heroes. heroes. He was so our great. first... Like I guess if you want to call it a celebrity guest. Oh yeah, he he's was so great. Yeah, he was he was so funny because he also does the voiceover work and yeah. stuff like that. I and mean, yeah. he has a really good he has a really good uh, perspective on stuff too. Also playing a really great villain. I always thought that the, the puppet master villain was really well done. He's amazing, and he was so when I knew I was getting killed off that show. I was like, it was the first time ever in my life I didn't have a job to go to. Mm -hmm. um, and because, like, before that, I had waited tables. Like, I literally went from, while my episodes of Friday Night Lights were airing, I was still waiting tables. I was still packing to go food at a restaurant here in LA. And then I quit my job because I got a couple guest stars and I ended up on Heroes. But I, like, I didn't have a job for, like, less than a month or something. So I knew I was not going to have a job after Heroes. And I was freaking out and I didn't know what to do with myself I didn't know what to, I was like where's my next paycheck gonna come from where's my you know I was freaking out and I was talking to David Lawrence about something I was like so do you know what you're doing next and I was like really anxious about it and he was like you need to calm down and he was like <laughs> you're gonna work you're gonna be fine and he was like you seem really anxious about not having a job and he was like so because he's been working forever yeah. and he's one of those people who's like not super famous and heroes put him on the map I think as far as like getting super like more more famous and um but I think he just has a great perspective. Greg is the same way, but, like, David really, like, is very grounded and, like, was like, don't worry about it. You need to be less anxious about, like, your day job, what your job's going to be. Right. Just keep doing your thing. And it was, like, it was really good advice. Well, with Greg, we can't all be friends with J.J. Abrams. God. I mean, you know. Greg is also the biggest hustler you've ever met in your life. Is he? He's amazing. Yeah, he's amazing because he's always on a new show. He's, like, literally you can't, he, like, is not working for, like, three seconds and then is, like, I don't know if he's ever had a pilot season where he hasn't had a pilot. I don't know if he's. I mean, he's just amazing. But so, just real quick, let's. let's uh, you're you're not. You know, you're obviously you're from Texas. We've already yeah. established, and yeah. you came in here. You you came out here, and you were waiting tables and all that. Totally. What do you do? What goes through your head? And what kind of advice can you give people who are just kind of moving out here That's to true. kind of whether it's to be a writer, a director, an actress, or an actor? You know, uh, right. anyone. What is the biggest kind of thing you would say to them? Like, you know, like if like. That moment where you had with David Lawrence, like, hey, don't freak out, it'll be okay, type of thing. Like, what would you kind of tell them? Um, well, when I first moved to LA, I had this big, well, one, I gave myself a limited time period. I was like, if you're not feeling like you're doing well, at first it was three months, which is not long enough. Um, <laughs> but then it was a year, and I was like, if you're not doing well by then, go back to, to Texas, like, and, you know, figure out what, I have a master's degree in history. I was like, I can fall back on that and go get my PhD. I could do all sorts of things. Um, so I had a time limit, which I don't suggest doing, actually. But because I put that limit on myself, I told myself I had to do something every single day, and I kept a journal. And I don't know where that journal is, but um, it, I kept a journal that was like, this is what I did today to help my acting career. Like, I took an acting class. I sent a postcard. I went and met it with casting director. I wrote my agent an email saying, this is what I'm doing. I auditioned for a student film. I did an indie movie. You know, like... It's really hard. Saturdays and Sundays were really hard because it's like <laughs> there's a reason those are like hard days to fill up. But um, that was what I did. I was basically like, I'm not going to let a day go by that I'm not working on this. I'm not going to like come out here and party and like, you know, whatever. And I was older when I moved out here. I was tw almost 25 when I moved out. So that's like, that also, I had a better perspective. If I had moved out when I was 18, I'd be dead and I got her. But um, <laughs> I, I just think that, I, I think that like treating it like it's your job instead of treating it like it's your hobby when you first start and hit the ground running and you know and just being vocal about what you want you know and I think people are really responsive when you're like I'm out here to pursue acting and people are like oh you know great what are you doing and if you can like if you know you're working then you have that confidence that you're gonna do something. How do you answer that question though when you're not when you don't have something going on where people like where I hate to say you're like bullshitting basically right. but you're to the point where you're just like you know you're, you're it's not like you're being lazy you're going out you're auditioning or you're writing you're trying to you know get pitch meetings or whatever it is you're doing but you know it's just not happening yet what do you say to those people who are just, you know, aside from fuck off? Right. Uh, next question. And we were talking about, no, we're talking about like people who just moved here. We're talking yeah. about people who just moved here. Yeah. So let's say they're in and their first year. And nothing's happening. And you know, it's not happening yet. You know, they're hustling, <laughs> but it's. 
I think it takes time. I mean, I have a theory about LA that it takes three years to live here because it takes that long to learn your way around and like and to start to meet people that you actually identify with and mm -hmm. like hang out with them. It's a tough fucking city to live in because like you're always driving. It's hard to make friends. Like people don't socialize in like the way they do in other cities. No. Like everybody's and everybody's very like sceny or like they're trying to meet someone to help them do this thing and it's hard to make like legit friends. I, I think it took me three years to make friends. Yeah. Um. But I mean. I don't know. I mean, I think it's that. I think the main thing to remember is that it's always like this. Mm -hmm. It's you're gonna have days where it's like, oh my god, I got a meeting with this person, or oh my god, I, I got this audition, or, or whatever that thing is that you're trying to do. And then you're gonna have days where it's like, oh my god, we, I like this person is never gonna hire me, or whatever. I just got turned down for that role, or or whatever, or I can't think of anything to do with my life, and I'm terrible, and whatever. I, I think that to remember it's like this, and to just have faith, and to keep working. I mean, I think the people who Get who I think the people who hustle are really the people who you know. The cream rises yeah. to the top. I think so. I really do believe that. I think the people who keep working are the people who, you know, even the people who don't have as much talent, the people who work the hardest get there. And I know that sounds terrible, but I do think that people who work their asses off do well. Oh, absolutely. This isn't an industry where you can sit on your laurels. And you obviously yeah. hadn't because you have, you know, you've gone from TV show to TV show to movie to movie and directing. And when you're not doing that, you're writing and you have all this other right. stuff going well, on. Right. But I get bored easily. So that, that's one of the that things. That helps. I get really bored and then I have to do something because otherwise I'm like, oh my God, I just made 400 donuts. Someone eat them. <laughs> and it's like, I'm crazy. <laughs> I, I, I will do that the okay. next time that happens. <laughs> I'll call you. Uh, please, please do. Uh, no. Uh, so I want to say thank you, uh, though, for coming thank on. Thank you. Having me. you you enjoy yeah. it? You have a good time? Yes, it's fantastic. You can lie to me. It's completely fine. I, no, and, and he gave me a little like gift thing when I came in that I'm going to eat uh, right after this. We have, we have gift it. things. We're yeah. snackies. Very exciting. That's what it's all about. You know, I got to treat my guests. Come on. Yeah, uh, us and the whole Hot Pixel post-production people that are oh, here yeah. that where we're shooting. Facility. It's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, everyone should come and do their post here. <laughs> uh, I say that we're literally going to cut to a commercial for them, like right really? when we come back. Yeah. Do it. So when Art's really nice, actually. Yeah. I know him. Art's he's a great guy, isn't he? He's great. Well, he helped me out, so I I love it. So I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, everyone, this is Bria Grant, and she's awesome to come on the show. And when we come back, we have like a whole bunch more show for you guys. So uh, stick around, and we'll be right back. Hey everyone, we're back, and uh, that was such a fantastic experience to have Miss Bria Grant on the show. Um, it's been a long time coming, and I'm glad I was able to, to talk with her about Best Friends Forever. I'm very excited. We have another film that I want to talk about, another interview that we did this week that I'm really excited about with another filmmaker that we've been trying to get an interview with for, I kid you not, at least two years. Um, and it's been one of those situations where her... Um, we weren't able to work out with her publicist. She was going to be here one time. We were going to, you know, it just turned out we were at another festival another time, and it was just crazy. Um, but we have, uh, uh, we finally got around to sitting down over at the Avalon Hotel in Beverly Hills with uh, Connected director Tiffany Schlain. Um, and it was such a, it was, it, she, it was just such a great interview to sit down and, and talk with her about the process of making this film, what it's about, and what she's kind of doing with it, because there are a few unique aspects to what she's doing. We were able to actually uh, go to a screening of it as well over at the new YouTube studios. Um, and and th that place, if you haven't been there, that place is, for lack of a better term, it's tits. It's awesome. It's, it's a really awesome, uh, epic, just airplane hanger of... of 
like cool film web series and other stuff. It's just like it's a filmmaker's dream to go there. So um, if you have an opportunity to get a tour of the YouTube studios and you're in Los Angeles, please do it because I, I couldn't recommend it enough. Um, great screening, great people uh, that were there. Um, S Tiffany has had the uh, experience of being to Sundance multiple times. Um, she's done some, I believe, some TED Talks as well about what she does. Um, her father is a famous author, and this movie Connected is really almost a love letter to her father wrapped in, you know, a... a um, a sociological piece about, you know, or an anthropological piece about what humankind is and how we're connected and disconnected from each other. So I want to go ahead right now, play a little snippet from our interview with Tiffany Schlain, and when we uh, come back, you know, we're going to move on to the next thing. But if you want to see more of that interview, make sure you go onto our YouTube page over at youtubecom snobbery. Make sure you subscribe while you're there too, because why not? Just a little button. Um, check out the full interview because uh, she's really got some really cool things to talk about, uh, what she's doing with that, and just her experiences. At Sundance, etc., and it's just wonderful. So we'll be right back with uh, uh, more show. But for now, I want you guys to enjo uh, enjoy our little snippet of interview with uh, director Tiffany Schlain. See you in a minute. My name's name Tiffany Schlain, and I'm a filmmaker and a mother. And I founded the Webby Awards. And um, what other things defined who I am? I'm married. I've been married for 16 years. <laughs> Connected, it, the tagline is Connected, an autoblogography about love, death, and technology. And um, it started out as a feature documentary looking at the history of connectedness in our world from the Big Bang to Twitter and what is the good, the bad, and the potential of all that connectedness. And then in the middle of making that film, my father, who was co writing it with my husband and co writers and I, and um, got brain cancer. and so I suddenly realized that I was exploring connectedness on a very intellectual side of things and not emotionally. So um, although I had never been in any of my films, I realized to tell the true story of our desire to be so connected all the time, I needed to go to the root of that, which is our connectedness with our parents. And so suddenly my losing my father became part of the story, which, so it, it kind of goes back and forth. It's very funny. I, when I just described it, it sounds so... Uh, serious which of course it has that in there but it also has a lot of humor and it looks at connectedness in our world um, as a species and my own story of connectedness to try to get to some bigger truth about connectedness So I'm at lunch with this really good friend of mine and we are having a fantastic time I haven't seen her in years we're laughing drinking talking but I'm still getting this urge to check my email. And I was like, Tiffany, stay focused. You traveled all the way across the United States to see her, stay focused. But eventually it was like, it overtook me. And then I fake needing to go to the bathroom. So I excuse myself, grab my phone, go into the bathroom stall, kind of hiding, texting, emailing, thinking, what if I become? I can't be the only one sneaking to the bathroom to check my email. Technology is clearly changing us and the way we connect with our friends, our families, and the world around us. So I set out to make a film about what it means to be connected in the 21st century. Things are changing. There's so much more to think about. And that pace of change is only accelerating. How much faster can it go before we can't keep up? This was the kind of question I was exploring in this film. And then I had this year that turned my world upside down. And forced me to rethink everything I thought I understood about the ways we're connected. We as humans have accumulated so much knowledge. Why do we have such a hard time seeing the bigger picture?
Hey everyone, hope you guys really enjoyed the interview we just did with Tiffany Schlain. Um, she is so fun and she's got just such a, a, a length and breadth of, of things to talk about when it comes to not only technology, which is the world I actually come from, um, but also film. I mean, it, it's a really great to talk to her for me because it's a great intersection to all the things that I'm very passionate about as a geek. And speaking of geeks, one of the things I want to talk to you about, I, we kind of talked about it last week as well, but I want to, I've got a little, little bit of an update, um, the Geeky Awards. Uh, I'm a, a judge on the Geeky Awards. You can go enter uh, your, your entries over at thegeekyawards.com, which they just extended their entries to April 30th. And uh, it's, 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 if you're not familiar with them, I, basically they are the Oscars for geeks. So if you ever wanted to be really recognized for what you do, not even if you're just a web series or a film person, but what if you're very passionate about other things, like you know, um, you know, if you make fan trailers for things, if you do podcasts, if you do comic books, graphic novels, I'm totally reading off of stuff right now, but comic books, graphic novels, video games, mobile games, if you're passionate about cosplay and fashion, and they do have a cosplay contest right now, and it's where they're getting crazy votes on it, and we've got great entries this year, it's fantastic. Um, designer toys, tabletop games, art and illustration, crafts and food. You've got geeky cupcakes. I mean, come on. I would love to see a really cool cake shaped like a TARDIS that somehow is bigger on the inside. Because um, more food for me. And uh, t-shirt design, retail stores. If you, have a, if you have a geeky retail store, not like the Ned Flanders left-handed store, but you know, something, you know, if, you, if, you, if you've got a comic book shop or something like that and you want to you know, talk about what you're doing with that, uh, and enter it in, you know, if you, it's, it's awesome. Websites, home decor, uh, con, if, you got, if you do con booths and it's geeky, crowdfunding geeky thing, like the, the what is it, um, uh, Legend of the Night or something like that, there's this great Batman documentary that's, that's, uh, that's coming out, it's on Kickstarter right now, it's fantastic. Um, uh, it, uh, check out Twitter for it, it's, it's, I think it's called Legend of the Night, K, you know, Night spelled with a K. Um, and it's, it's, it's all about Batman and how Batman inspires people. I mean, those are the things that they want to see over at thegeekyawards.com. Um, I'm, I'm, again, like I mentioned, I'm a judge. The reason why I'm bringing it up, though, is because I'm going to be doing a Google Hangout with these guys on uh, the 13th of March. Uh, I think it's around noon or 1 o'clock or something like that. We'll figure it out. Um, but keep an eye out for it because uh, I would love for you guys to see uh, myself talk about what I'm passionate about the things that make me a geek and share kind of a little bit of my world outside of film snobbery with you guys. So um, if, you're getting to, if you want to get to know myself a little bit better, I don't know, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but if you do, great opportunity to check out that Google Hangout on the 13th. So um, uh, that said, we've got, uh, so yeah, I'm just going to say it again. Um, Geekywords.com. These guys have a bunch of stuff in the works right now. I'm, I, I just I cannot wait to to disclose more information as it becomes available. So uh, the next thing is I was on Twitter. Okay, so I'm on Twitter and and I get messages on Twitter all the time. Ninety percent of them are people going like, Hey, will you you know back my crowdfunding campaign? And believe me, if I had money, I totally would. Um, you know, so the best I can do is you know throw a re retreat out or whatever. But I got something else that was interesting this time. So I, you know, we are, we're always looking out for people showing us a cool trailer or something like that. Well, what we got was this guy uh, who, uh, these guys are the makeshift movie makers. And they said, hey, check out this video. Might be good for film snobbery. Um, maybe you show it on your show. And, you know, I, you know, I took a look at it. It was on YouTube. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm totally going to show that on my show. Because, you know, the, the method is a little janky. But you know what? It works. It's DIY. And it's totally what independent film is all about. So I want to show you you guys right now it's the makeshift movie makers $18 jib made in under three minutes now it's made in under three minutes the the the, the little skit that they do is actually a little longer it's like six minutes I don't know if we're going to show the whole thing but I want to show you guys at least a little bit of it um, because these guys are kind of cool I like what they're doing and you know we're always happy to share like new and awesome stuff with you guys and maybe you might learn something for your next movie so uh, when we come back uh, from these guys um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we've got a little bit of show left. We're basically going to wrap up, though. Um, but, uh, you know, first, makeshift movie makers, $18 jib, under three minutes. See you in a minute. Hi, welcome to Makeshift Movie Makers. Today we're going to show you how to make a crane jib for only $18 in under three minutes. Let's get started. <laughs>
before we get started, let me catch you up to speed on my screenplay, She's the Girl. I was actually talking to a guy at eHow, and he told me if I want to sell my screenplay, I'm going to have to make it a little bit more personal. So that's what I've been working on this week. But enough about me. Let's get to the crane chip. Here's your grocery list. Two 2 by 4s a lawn chair, organic peanut butter, and a mouse pad. Now that you have your grocery list, before we get started, Hank here is going to show us how to build the crane jet. Hi there, welcome to Makeshift Movies, Hollywood Effect Makeshift Movies. Today's episode, we're going to teach you how to build a jib. A jib is much like the slider, from what I understand, uh, except instead of going horizontally, it'll go up and down. It's it's more of a it's more of a pivot right there. Yeah. Yeah. On the elbow. Depending on if it's well balanced or. Well, yeah, but it's it's not one of these. You were doing one of these earlier. Well, it's, it's, it goes up. No, but the, it stays. While the guys are busy building the jig, it's time for a little ten code trivia. What legendary? You online last time, there were some commenters just saying you weren't like. Oh, okay. Um, so just, just for the future episodes, just kind of be a little bit more likable on camera. You know, just like be, be, be likable. You know. Okay. Um, right? I mean, we all want this to go well, right? Maybe we, we yeah. want a YouTube feature or maybe some sponsorship. Sure. Um, do you have any suggestions for me? Or? Uh, just be like, like a person someone would like. Okay. Okay. You got this. You can do it. Right. Okay. Hold on, wait until I say action. Okay. Action! While the guys are busy building the jig, it's time for a little time code trivia. What legendary director holds the record for most car explosions on a blockbuster film? Give up? The answer is legendary director Michael Bay. Awesome, right? All right, now that we got all our ingredients, it's time to make some dinner. Uh, before we get started, was, was Carol going to join us today? Uh, no, she actually has an audition at a modeling agency. Oh, that's great. Um, it's actually a pretty professional little thing. It's a, she's, she found it on Craigslist, and uh, they don't do any, like, rinky-dink stuff. They don't do, like, children's stuff, only adults. All right. Well, uh, you know, maybe next week she'll actually show up to what she agreed to work on. Step number one, get your butter knife right here. Butter knife is not as, not as sharp as a steak knife. Not going to... You're right. Go right through the middle right here. We already uh, took care of that in an earlier take. We weren't rolling, uh, but now we know. You grab a two by four, takes a little bit of finagling, lay your other one on top. I like to call it the white man's chopsticks. You get on the back here. It's your counterbalance leg right here. Push down the bottom two by four. Work on the tilt with the top two by four. You notice this top 2x4 is slipping and sliding a little bit. You got a slip sliding 2x4, you don't get a steady shot. Now you get your knife again, and you get your organic peanut butter. Now the best part of this organic peanut butter is it cuts a lot of the friction. Now that's exactly what we need to do with this 2x4. So, let's open her up. Now just a little dab will do, just a little dab, little dab. Right on the end there. You're missing the most important step of the process though. Mouse pad, nature shock absorber. So you put your mouse pad right on the bottom right there. I know you guys uh, use a lot of gaff tape and a lot of your other uh, filmmaking stuff, uh, but I do want you to know that we are a uh, carbon neutral uh, film production company. Gaff tape is not carbon neutral, so we use masking tape. It's just as good. you got to use about twice as much. So what you do, you get your camera, place right there, get some masking tape, and just wrap around all day long. Just keep on wrapping around. I would recommend charging the batteries in case you got to take the camera off. Just give this baby a shot. Hmm? You raise this up, look at that. Now that right there is a beaut. Now that we've made our crane jib, we got to put it to good use. Now for today's test footage, we're actually shooting a scene that I rewrote from my screenplay, She's the Girl. Roll them. Didn't we just buy milk two days ago? Frank's going to make us protein smoothies. <sighs> With our milk? Jason, I'm really starting to rethink subletting our closet out to him. I don't even know him. Well, we know he's super messy. We know that he doesn't clean up after himself and do dishes. He eats all our leftovers and he s smells bad. Did you write this about me? What? 
Did you write this scene about me? Did you drink all our milk? What? Did you drink all our milk? No, I, I, I didn't drink no milk. You're right, Frank is so tough to live with. Yeah, it sure is tough to live with. What do we do? I hoped it wouldn't come to this. But I think we're enough to kill him. What? That's all, folks. Thanks for watching Makeshift Movie Makers. I apologize for some of the sloppy editing this week. Things were a little bit hectic with our new roommate in the house, so we were a little bit rushed for time. But join us next week when we show you how to make a Hollywood-style shoulder rig. You just got makeshifted. Hey, everyone. We're back. Uh, so if you want to watch the rest of that, go on to YouTube and just search out the Makeshift Movie Makers because they're some cool people. They reached out to us. We want to make sure that they, uh, they get their, their due response there. Uh, but it is time for us to go. And I hate this part of the show. Every time I have to leave, I feel like my father when I was five. They just, he goes. It's sad. No. Um, we got a great show for you guys next week, though. I'm really excited. He's the director of The Passengers. Uh, it's a movie he's in the process of, uh, feature he's in the process of making right now. His name is Drew Daywalt. He is a master of, of independent horror cinema. You can actually read a lot of the stuff that he uh, puts out on Fearnet. Uh, so check out him over on Fearnet. Uh, you can check out some of the stuff that, you know, other movies and shorts that he's done. He's, he's got stuff everywhere. If I took the time to list out his entire, you know, IMDb credentials, we'd be here for a while. And this guy has only been, you know, making movies for, well, that I've known of for the past, like, several years, you know. But uh, he's, he's just got a huge body of work that has been culminating and building. And he's got a great fan base, and he's just a great guy. So, um... I, I finally got a chance to meet him in person when I moved out to Los Angeles. We met up at Kamikaze, and we're like, dude, do the show. And he's like, dude, okay. And uh, <laughs> one thing I like about him, too, I don't know if she'll be here or not, but one of the things I, I really like about him is that he makes movies with his wife. And I always think, like, there's, uh, I have friends of mine that are uh, gamers, and they, they're, they're married, and they play video games together. And it's, like, the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. And it makes me uh, have hope for my own future, like... If they could find people that, that are as passionate about the things that they like, maybe I can. It's a beautiful thing. So um, for all of you, those out there who are a fan of Drew and a fan of, uh, a fan of uh, horror, an independent horror especially, you're going to love that show. So stick around. That's next week, next Thursday, same time, 7 p.m. PST, Pacific Standard Time, here at FilmSnobberyLive.com. Make sure to send us in your questions for Drew so we can read them live on the air. And make sure that if you're in the chat room, ask us your questions as well. We'll try our best to get to them. I want to thank everyone who actually, A, participates in this show, uh, both behind the scenes here and also in the chat room. Um, I don't have all your names in front of you like I did last week, but I want to say thank you so much for, uh, for so continuing to support the show. Our numbers last week were awesome. I'm hoping that those numbers will grow every single week, and I hope that we can continue to provide awesome content to you guys. Um, and uh, thank you guys for, for just, uh, thank you for Bria for being an epic guest, and thank you for everyone who watches the show for being, like, the best audience ever. Don't tell the other audiences, though, because they'll get jealous. This is just for us. Okay? So, uh, and I also want to say again, thank you to the Hot Pixel Post Production people here in Universal City. They uh, were nice enough to give us the space and to give us the bandwidth and to just, you know, really give us a home here in Los Angeles when we were, you know, having such a hard time finding one. So, um, for if you have an interest at all in getting your post production work done for your independent film, commercial, whatever, go to hotpixelink.com and uh, these guys will take good care of you. So, I want to say thank you, good night, and we'll see you next week. See you later. Bye.